Perfect barbecue. You use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the really big Barbecue Central show. This is the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. Broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Ohio. Widely considered to be the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here. On your Tuesday evening, lots of stuff to get to tonight. If you should see fit to join in the show this evening, whether it be through a phone call or an email, here's how you can do that. You can get in touch with the show by calling 216-220-0966. Email Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. On the Twitter and Instagram, at BBQ Central Show. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening in case you didn't get the newsletter coming up in about 12 minutes from now. It is the fourth Tuesday of the month. Folks, believe it or not, June is going to be out with the wind. I don't even think that's a saying, but I just coined it. It's going to be out with the wind here before you know it. And joining me in his standard fourth Tuesday of the month fashion, the keeper of the flame over at AmazingRibs.com, Max Good, will be joining us. And we'll be talking with Max about, if you would recall, last month he was literally on his way over to, I think, Connecticut to hang out with Myron Mixon and the gang that is putting together the Myron Mixon smokers out there. So we'll get kind of a an update or a recap of how that particular weekend went. And then as time permits, we'll get into some of the high-tech grilling gadgets for 2017 summer. So looking forward to that. At 9.35, we will institute the debut of what I am calling the Embedded Barbecue Central Show Correspondence Segment. Within that segment, you will find embedded Texas correspondent Doug Shiding from Rogue Cookers, and you will also find embedded Tennessee correspondent Steve Ray. I tried lining up who may or may not now be the official Oklahoma correspondent, David Huff. He seems to be a little in the wind at the moment. But if uh, we somehow wrangle him in, that's fine. If not, we have more than enough topics to talk about between Steve, Doug, and myself at 9.35. Then we'll move on to the second hour. And at 10.14, you know, I don't usually encourage the three-person interview, but when you have the likes of a Sterling Ball and a Tuffy Stone and an Emily Detweiler showing up to talk about the Smithfield Classic, you put it together. That's a 1014. We'll also be talking about a guinea pig contest that'll be taking place in July, I believe, being put on by Daryl Bowman and I'm sorry, Randall Bowman and Arlie Bragg, Arlie Q. So lots to talk about at 1014 with that gang of characters. And then at 1035, first timer to the show, part of the Pellet Envy Cook Team, Sherry Gray. Usually Rod, first time with Sherry. We're going to be talking about a subject, at least for the balance of the segment. You never know how these things are going to unfold as we get going. But if you follow Rod on the social media types, typically Facebook is where I find him, although he is active on the Twitter as well. I think it's like every Tuesday you see Sherry holding or showcasing a sandwich that is pork tenderloin. Not so poison pork tenderloin. But I've never heard of a pork tenderloin sandwich outside of Rod's posts. 
And whenever I see anybody posting something about pork tenderloin sandwich, it's at least within the vicinity of like the greater Kansas City area, whether that be Kansas or Missouri. I don't see it here in Cleveland. I haven't seen it anywhere basically on the East Coast. So we're going to be diving headlong into the pork tenderloin sandwich. I don't know if saga is the right word, but phenomenon. Because I'm saying it now as a phenomenon. We'll see what happens. Sherry Gray, 1035. Looking forward to that. All right, folks. Blast off the emails. Get on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Tumblr. Anybody on Tumblr? Reddit nerds. Get on the Reddit. And let everybody know the show is live, local, and late breaking. OutdoorCookingChannel.com is the place to check out the video. Longtime video syndication partner. Of course, the audio can be found at my website. The BBQ Central Show.com. Also available on Roku or a number of other internet protocol television platform. So if you have one of those, check out your individual app store, then search for Outdoor Cooking Channel. If it's there, download it, and then you can watch the live stream, but you can also get a host of archives as well. And don't forget, the clearinghouse for this show begins and ends with my website. So if you've ever missed a show or you want to go back and listen to a different segment, you don't want to mess around with all the other ways to get it, Go to my website, subscribe on iTunes, subscribe on the Google, all the other podcast directories. It's, it's all there for your consumption. And that way, if you ever miss something, you can always go back and listen to it later. All right, so let me immediately get to the interview that took place last weekend, sorry, last Tuesday, with one Blake Cars, who by all accounts hit huge. <laughs> This is coming from a reactionary standpoint, me being the host, producer, and engineer of the show. 50-50 reaction. Half of you thought Blake brought an incredible energy, an incredible perspective, and an incredible story to the show this past Tuesday. The other half want to get on board with that 50%, but there seemed to be quite a bit of confusion on just what the hell happened to him in the beginning stage with that billionaire parachuting in and like mucking it all up for him. For instance, let me share a few emails and social media posts that I got. This email coming from Steve M. He writes, Greg, my show stopping suggestion would be to have Blake Carson and the dude from Cigars and Stripes on at the same time, preferably at his bar in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That, of course, the, the other guy from Cigars and Stripes being Ronnie Lotz. Steve, I think that's who you meant to say, Ronnie Lotz. Who can forget that name? Ronnie Lotz, character. Also on the, I want to get on board with the positive 50%, but I'm a little unsure. Mark O writes, I just listened to your podcast with Blake Carson. Weirdest interview I've ever heard. I couldn't tell you if that guy was a conspiracy theorist follower of a cult leader or was just making the whole thing up laugh out loud keep up the good keep up the good work man nate now on the awesome side we go to social media terry t posted blake carson was more than interesting and entertaining keep up the good work donnie g posted great interview with blake carson what a crazy story so if you're just tuning in tonight for the first time or you don't subscribe to the podcast you have no idea what i'm talking about all you have to do is go back to last week's show, which I believe is the 22nd. Is that right? The 27th, whatever, 20th, and listen to it, and then you tell me what you think as far as the Blake Carson interview, because I got to tell you, a lot of people were weighing in one way or the other. And uh, as I've said, it, it was 50-50 positive and 50-50 like, uh, what? And he, th I got to be honest, you know, as a, what I would consider a semi-professional interviewer, I was a little taken aback when the story started going into like, had to sit out for three years and I couldn't really figure out what the deal was other than it sounded like he was being threatened or the term that he uses was extorted and that the law was up, up, upholding the extortion that was taking place to him. And then after three years and some advice from a very famous maybe movie director or somebody like that, he referenced Ace Ventura. He said, hey, you're just scared. Get over your scared. Get back out there. Get going. Nothing's going to happen. And 
there we go. So, you know me, I'm a lover of details. I would love to have maybe a little bit more detail on that, but that's all right. So, uh, as I said, if you missed the Blake Carson interview from Carson Rodigio, uh, please go back to the podcast. And uh, don't forget you can sign up for that so you never miss another show. It will be neatly delivered to you every Wednesday. And there you go. Where's Here we go. All right, folks, uh, let me talk to you quickly about the Barbecue Guru. Gang, are you looking to turn up the heat on your barbecue skills this summer? If so, you need, you need to get your hands on the most high-tech barbecue accessory to hit the market this summer of 2017. We're talking about the Barbecue Guru's CyberQ Cloud. That's right. It's a must-have new product making barbecuing easier than ever before. And you will now have the secret weapon that everybody else across the neighborhood and perhaps your regional area would be lusting to find out what happened. Here you go. If I've intrigued your interest or piqued it and you're ready to buy, head on over to the website bbqguru.com. That's bbqguru.com and grab up that CyberQ cloud. If you have any questions about what to order, don't guess, okay? Please call 800-288-GURU. That's 800-288-GURU. Or you can visit the website bbqguru.com. I was corresponding with Bob Trudnack earlier today. We're trying to set up a time to have him come on, talk about all the new cookers, all the new technology, all that good stuff. But he's working on some things on his end. So as soon as he frees up and can do it, we'll book him up and we'll learn all about it together. CyberQ Cloud, you can monitor temperatures while you're in the grocery store, seven states away, doesn't matter. Make adjustments to the pit, all that good stuff. The Barbecue Guru continues to be a breakthrough in barbecue technology. And uh, as I said before, the longest supporter here of this show. So hit them up, bbqguru.com or 800-288-GURU. Again, a breakthrough in barbecue technology. We are back with Max Good right after this. Stick around, be right back. Live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, well. Muting myself like crazy. All right, welcome back, as I said. Hey, you love to barbecue, you love to compete, you love to win. Do all three with some help from Smithfield since 1938. Smithfield producing high-quality fresh pork products, and now they invite you to get smoking with Smithfield. If you're a competitive barbecuer, you can join the Committed Cooks program. Members who commit to cooking with premium hand-trimmed Smithfield fresh pork will receive swag and other great prizes. Commit to cooking with Smithfield and see what's going on in barbecue by visiting the website Smokin. S-M-O-K-I-N, smoking with Smithfield.com. All right. Usually seen here on the fourth Tuesday of every month, the keeper of the flame, the guy that says, hey, do you have discretionary income to throw around on cookers and other such whatnot? Well, listen to me. I got something to say about. It's Max Good joining me here on the show. Max, how are you, buddy? Doing good. How about you, pal? Absolutely fabulous, Max. Appreciate you making time as always here. Let me pull you up here on the big board so everybody can see you. Um, last time we had you on, you, uh, A, filled in for Stephen Reichlin on the third Tuesday of the month. So I appreciate you coming back into the uh, normal stable on the fourth Tuesday. Now, I mean, can you believe Big shoes. You... Big shoes there, Greg. Yeah, of course. Uh, although, what I've... Mm, I better just let that one go. So... 
you were on your way to, I believe, Connecticut to hang out with Myron Mixon and the gang over at whoever makes Myron Mixon smokers. So let's recap, right? I mean, you were pretty excited. You were getting ready to head over the next day in the morning and do all that stuff. Talk to me about what ended up happening and some of your takeaways. Well, as as we discussed last time, uh, Meathead and I had um, trepidations about the whole idea. We don't normally do junks, junkets, as they say, you know. But um, in this case, we made an exception for several reasons. Uh, one being that he's Myron Mixon. <laughs> it's like he's got more awards than we could ever bestow upon him. And secondly, it it would we saw it as an opportunity to be at that competition and and observe what was going on and also see their facility where they actually construct their equipment. Uh, it ended up being good. Everybody was very much uh, in tune with the idea that uh, we're going to do objective reviews and they were very sensitive to not overdoing, shall we, you know, like, Oh, Max, we're going to wine and dine you. I mean, we we did have fun together and we did things together, but um, uh, they they were very uh, cognizant of that issue. Uh, and so as a result, I got to know the Mixon family better. I got to know uh, uh, the the manufacturing group that makes their their equipment. And I got to attend that Mohegan Sun KCVS sanctioned event. And it was really neat. All right. So from a product standpoint, and I guess from a manufacturing standpoint, what did you think and did you rate or did you give your awards to any of these cookers yet? Or is that still like in the debate process? Well, as usual, a million things get shoved in front of me, but I am hopefully tomorrow I'm going to start working on, uh, I think I'm going to start with their gravity feed uh, charcoal smoker. Uh, very impressive uh fit and finish on everything. The engineering to them is, is uh, I, 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 I'm I fascinated by this idea that, I, I actually just spoke with Myron this morning. We had a long discussion. We had a lot of fun and, and shared some ideas. Um, you know, he's, he's a good old guy, you know, I, and he's very savvy, of course, and knows what he's talking about. But I said, Myron, something that struck me was that a, a lot of people that are making the type of smokers that <laughs> that have your name on them are these little metal fabricators and all, you know, and uh, here you're with uh, Rob Morelli, you know, with CENCON, who does work for uh, the military, does for a lot of healthcare uh, groups, and his stuff has to be spot on, mm -hmm. spec-wise. And the the meeting of the two cultures, in a way, is fascinating to me. And he goes, well, yeah, I, I think a lot of guys that are making smokers, they don't have engineers on staff, and we do. And I come up with ideas, and these guys pump them into the computers and make it, you know, you do, do everything that engineers do to make it come out just right. And I will tell you, when you get hands on the, their equipment, it... Uh, it doesn't have the luxurious beauty as some of the outdoor kitchen stuff, but it has the fit and finish. You can't see welds. You it has the the hardware and all are are are, are very. Uh, I don't know if I'd say innovative, but there's a lot of attention to detail. I don't want to put anybody else down, but it's an interesting uh, marriage of two cultures, if you will. And I, I, it appears to me that's working out well. Uh, all our testing went very well as also. So uh, I'm eager to get working on the reviews. So is, is, is there another company that is making some other kind of Myron Mixon smoker? Or have they brought it all under one house and one manufacturer at this point? It's just one. All right. So anybody yeah. else and that had I hands in it is now out and it's just this Connecticut company now? Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that Myron's just a face on it. I, I he's very much involved sure. in it, and he and uh, the owner of CENCON are pals. You know, it's it's um, it's it's a good relationship, as in my view, from what I've seen. Do you have any idea uh, what kind of a percentage Myron Mixon is versus the other stuff that he's into? I mean, 
this is probably not his core business is making smokers, right? Well, I, I think he and his folks are committed to it, sure. as is CENCON, but um, uh, both of them have other interests, you know. Uh, so it's not the they're they're not just hanging their hat on it. But I, I it's clear to me that Myron Mixon Smokers, which is a collaboration between the Mixon's crew and CENCON, um, they're they're very interested in propelling the the brand to higher heights how many different options are there right now oh my there's um that many let's get <laughs> well <laughs> wow well there's three basic groups of smokers they do have some grills as well mm -hmm. but there's the uh, uh gravity feed charcoal smokers there's his famous h2o water smokers yeah. and there's their new pellet smokers which right now um um, are they only have a large model that's for commercial use? That could be said about their other stuff too. They, they're right now their uh, their core business is for caterers and commercial work. The water smoker is that something where the water is actually boiling underneath, or is it just used as a heat sink? No, Myron says you got to get that water boiling. Yeah. It's an interesting design, and I think it's um, something that uh, he's known for. We all uh, know that people throw water pans in, and there are some other designs that have um, fixed water reservoirs, if you will. Yeah. But this is actually welded right into the into the smoker itself, and you have basically a a a fireplace grate underneath it where you have logs and you're burning logs and there's um just like in the backwoods or some of the uh other charcoal smokers where you have a uh a, a, a double wall that comes up and then the heat and smoke comes down into the smoke box mm -hmm. it's like that it comes in over the water mm -hmm. and he has an automated um uh, uh water supply system that's similar to <laughs> similar to your uh, toilet tank. It has a floating device on it where where once the water gets to a certain level, it shuts it off. It, this, you hook a hose up to it. Yeah. You hook a water hose up. So to it's it. it's constantly keeping the water at a, at a yeah, determined yeah, level. Yeah. Yeah. And Myron's adamant about. It. Well, it's an interesting idea because they they don't put like twenty logs in and get this roaring fire, but they they get that fire going. It's not like with an offset where the guys that really know what they're doing with an offset and competitions, they're very careful to get uh, the logs cooking just right. Just they, they're embers, you know, and then they put them in and they use a minimal amount. Now, with the H2O smokers from Myron Mixon, you only use, I think, like three or four splits, but you let them rip roar. You know, they're rip roaring flaming and you'll have to change them. I add more every half hour or so, you know, as needed. But Myron says you got to get that water boiling to make it work the way he wants it to work. And you cook hot, like 275 to 320. Um, and and uh, something he uh, promotes, because there's so much uh, of his business that's catering and commercial, is that that humidity, he claims, <laughs> can add like 8, I think, to 12% weight to the meat. Yield. And weight, weight, weight equals money yeah, when right. you're selling the meat. You right. Know? Greater yield. So, uh, sure. Anyway, the cabinet smokers, they're wonderful. They, the held heat incredibly. Oh, now, now, in conjunction with uh, using a, a, a temperature controlling fan device like a barbecue guru, yeah. they are working on getting their own. Uh, device their own branded device uh one thing that all of those mixins keep keep complaining about is that most of the f fan devices out there have uh plastic parts on them that can melt mm -hmm. um they uh, obviously intend to address that all right uh max good joining us here on the show amazingribs.com the website uh, anything else to tie a bow on the meyer mix and smokers or we can move on from there uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that uh, Myron said, well, the best advice he ever got, his dad gave him, cook it till it's done. 
that's very Mixonian, right? Yeah, very, uh, he, very yeah, he sage said, advice. He said, don't, don't say, hey, I've been partying all day and everybody's griping. And yeah, because we know, you know, when we talk about the stall and things that can be a, uh, an effect on when the thing is done, he said, your friends and family have been waiting there all day. Don't serve them bad barbecue, even if they're griping. That's right. Cook it till it's done. Sage <laughs> advice. Like Sage advice. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we were going to be talking about, you had a nice write-up. Was it an eater or Serious Eats? Uh, or one serious of those? Eats. Yeah, Serious yes, Eats. We love those guys. SeriousEats.com, Kenji, Kenji's uh, website. That's right. Uh, Kenji wrote the foreword to Meathead's book. Um, they're they're kind of like us. Kenji's been know, on with, this show, by the way. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. I didn't know you were that big. Oh, you right? must be a big fan of the show. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you were talking about uh, technology in 2017, right? Barbecue and grilling technology this year. So what were some of the things that uh, really caught your attention that you think is going to be popular? Well, a big thing that I think is, um, is creating an impetus for higher tech uh, uh, ideas in barbecue is the ubiquitous use of smartphones. Everybody's got them. You know, several years ago, not many people had them. Now yeah, yeah. we all have them. Everybody. Everybody's walking around staring at them. You're damn know? right. And there's, there's apps for everything. And there's apps for all kinds of barbecue stuff. And, and uh, uh, early adopters like Mac and um, Green Mountain and, and Memphis and others we're working on that. Uh, now Timberline's jumped in, a Traeger Timberline, Traeger with a new Timberline, excuse me, we discussed them. Um, apps, you know, everybody's app crazy. And I'll tell you, you can get really easily spoiled on them too. Um, it's just nice to be able to have all that information wherever you go, you know, especially if you're doing low and slow cooking, you know, you don't wanna be handcuffed to the smoker. And with an app, you can go and do errands, go to a party, go somewhere, you know, and monitor what you're doing for hours and hours. It's really cool. Um, so I think we're going to see more and more of it. In fact, Barbecue Guru just came up with a new uh, Kamado that they're calling Monolith that has voice activation. It's um, it's uh, that wasn't in that article, Serious Eats. I just learned about this. Uh, but they have one of their cyber Q systems hooked up to it with voice activation. And I'm like, there you go. You know, it's, I, I, I can guarantee you're going to see more and more of it. Um, you know, uh, some people know about Alexis and these other voice activated systems. It's Alexa. Alexis is, it's Alexa. It's not Alexa. Alexa. Oh, I'm sorry. Ale okay. Thank it you. It would just sit you. there and it would never answer you if you said Alexa. You couldn't have <laughs> okay. that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, you, know, you uh, several companies have them. That that's Amazon. Yeah. Um, and people are pairing them up with uh, uh, temperature controllers and and digital thermometers that are on Wi-Fi. Um, you know, but uh, Barbecue Guru chose to just go direct. I guess I I just learned about this, so I don't know a lot about it. But it's allegedly voice activated, and I think. That's something that's going to be happening in all of our lives, in many areas of our lives. Could we play angry, old, aged curmudgeons for one second and say, hey, this tech is great, but aren't we losing something that if we're in the kitchen and we go, Alexa, please adjust the pit on the Lang to 325 degrees and magically it takes place. Aren't we losing a whole step of being able to go out, look at the pit, see the temperature start to drop, know you can add a split or two and you get it to swing back up? And Isn't there a whole romance that we're going to be missing out on potentially? And does anybody care about romance? Well, uh, I do. I'm a romantic guy, Greg. I, knew I love you, by love the way. I love you. you know? All right. Uh, at any rate, um, yeah, when we depend on these, these devices, um, you – if they're gone, right. what do you do then? Right. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, just this morning when I was talking to Myra and I said, did your dad, you know, of course, we all know his story. His dad taught him how to do all this stuff. And 
I said, did your dad ever use digital thermometers? He goes, no, he never did it. Oh, no and way. And he would cook, you know, like 30 hams, you know, on a big pit, you know, like concrete block pit thing. Uh, but he but he said at the same time, he said, but I always in my classes, I teach people, use them, use them. You don't want to, you want a short learning curve. Sure. Now that said, if something goes haywire and you've depended on it, yeah, then, you know, you're, you're, you're scrambling. But um, I don't know what to say about that. You know, I grew up uh, cooking without them. Once I found them, I embraced them wholeheartedly. I think they're very important. As you know, at Amazing Ribs, we've long been pro proponents of uh, using digital thermometers. Sure. Um, uh, you know, it's... Safety first. The, I mean, for crying out loud, well, safety first. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's almost like saying, well, if I got a chainsaw, uh, you know, I'm going to use it. But if I don't have it, I'll I'll use a hatchet. You know, hopefully you know a little bit about what to do. Right. You know? All right. Uh, Max Good joining me here on the show. You can find him at AmazingRibs.com, a intricate breakdown of the Myron Mix and Smoke. Are, these are available for sale, right? The oh, Myron yes, Mix and Smoke. Yes. Okay. So uh, in, in production. And, uh, I mean, we're literally running out of time, so we can't really uh. go through all the uh, cool things that you listed in series. But... If you go to SeriousEats.com, I'm sure you can find the article that mentions things like the Thermopop and the Fireboard and the mm -hmm. uh, iGrill 3, which, of course, was technology that Weber bought from uh, iGrill or uh, iDevice, I believe, is the parent company. So uh, really cool stuff to get your hands on if you're into the tech. Yes, just uh, go to SeriousEats.com, and they have a look up the search thing, put in Max Good, and you'll see the article on uh, technology and barbecue. Um, and, of course, go to Amazing Ribs for right. everything that's, you need to know about barbecue. Where you should go. Uh, Max Good is here the fourth Tuesday of every month. It's the end of June. We will see you again at the end of July, my friend. I look forward to it. All right, take care. You too. It's Max Good. Right there if you need him. The keeper of the flame, as they say. All guests on the Barbecue Central show will appear via the Smithfield are. Hotline. They, they say that he is the keeper of the flame. Uh, I think widely argued that he might have one of the better jobs in the barbecue and grilling industry, being able to get his hands on all the cool stuff, and testing it out, putting it through its paces. And, of course, we appreciate him stopping by once a month and letting us know that this is a good cooker, this isn't a good cooker, this is a good accessory, this isn't, what can I tell you? Alex Pegg weighing in in the instant chat. I always thought, learn how to use your pit first, then you can use the automated tools to make cooking easier or less stressful. I agree with you, by the way, Alex. Uh, Basic Patrick busting my proverbial hump there, saying, yeah, I'm saying all this, but I have all the pellet cookers out in the back, which is absolutely true. But I also have a Lang. I know how to build a fire from scratch. I know how to keep a coal bed and run an offset, which I actually prefer, in all honesty, if I have my druthers and the time and all that other stuff. If the planets align, I would prefer running the offset. I love it. All right, thanks to Max Good again from AmazingRibs.com. I want to talk to you quickly about Cook Shack. They manufacture smoker ovens for barbecue lovers with any amount of experience, whether you barbecue in the backyard, in the competition circuit, or in a five-star dining facility. Cook Shack has the unit that will do the job, and with a full line of barbecue sauces, spices, pellets, and wood chunks, it is the perfect one-stop shop. Cook Shack strives to be your barbecue resource center by offering cooking classes, online recipes, how-to videos, two blogs, Smoke and Grilling 101s, and a video cooking classroom. Check out their website at cookshack.com or follow them on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+. Get advice or share your passion for barbecue on their world-class barbecue forum. Cook Shack pellet-fired smokers are the choice of champs because they were designed by a champ. You ever heard of Ed Fast Eddie Moore? Of course. The FEC 100, PG 1000, always customer favorites. The PG 1000 can double as a smoker and a grill. Low and slow or hot and fast, the pellet grill line gives you the most for your money. Cook Shack residential electric smokers are the number one smoker in the industry. High quality means high durability and versatility. Anything you could cook in your oven, you can make it a Cook Shack. Passion, dedication drives Cook Shack's manufacturing with quality always being at the forefront. 
Get the best in barbecue since 1962. Call 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698. Or visit their website, cookshack.com. All right, the Embedded Barbecue Central Correspondent segment taking place with at least two of the three Embedded Correspondents. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. Be right back. Six two two zero zero nine six X. Now let's get back to the LeBron James and barbecue talk. Craig Rampey. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Green Mountain Grills, manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. If you're looking for a big cooker to house a lot of food, they got one for you. If you're looking for medium size, they got you covered. Something to cook on tailgates or camping trips, sure. Got you covered there, too. They can also supply you with wood pellets to fire those cookers. Check them out at GreenMountainGrills.com. By the way, I am now trying the high-heat pizza oven insert from Green Mountain Grills. It is pretty dynamite, so check them out at GreenMountainGrills.com. All right, uh, tonight we are taking first stab at the embedded correspondence for the barbecue central show segment which i need to come up with a better marketing segment to really have it catch on like wildfire but texas and tennessee will represent this evening it's uh, steve ray and doug shining of course uh, boys really appreciate you joining me here for the inaugural segment as i race over to the big board here and try and get everybody steve are you there I'm here. Right. Can you hear me? Well, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Have you ducked your well, camera for fear that we might go blind or what? No. No. I'm, all right. I am. That's a joke, by the way. Skype. That's cool. I'm uh, on Skype. All right. Uh, Doug is here as well uh, from Row Cooker, Steve Owls Nest Barbecue Pitmaster. So let me start right there, guys. Let's, uh, Doug, let's start with you. The last Howdy. handful of weeks I've been talking about, please guest, define the term pitmaster if you think there is a definition, or as I think, we should maybe remove the term from the grilling and barbecue lexicon altogether. What do you think? I think uh, pit master is definitely a term. I have it on my barbecue card that I hand out. So obviously I think uh, I am a pit master. Um, I actually prefer that over kind of like pit boss or something like that. But um, I think a pit master is someone that's worked on a variety of different types of pits and uh, can you know say that they've they've used those for a while and you know being being an expert is is something that i don't like to say but um, at least knows their way around a, a you know a variety of different types of pits whether it's a you know stick burner pellet grill weber whatever steve what about you wow uh you know I've been, every, every week you, you go over this uh greg with a different guest i you know a pit master i Somebody like me can't be in the same room with Doug, uh, a Myron Mixon, a Donnie Bray, right, right. a Rub Bagby. Um, you, you know, we're we're I, I'm a, I'm an amateur compared to these guys, but in my in, on my team, I am the pit master because I'm kind of the coordinator. I guess I guess the best thing to say, Doug and Greg, is if you pay for the entry into all the contests, you're the pit master. It's almost like this. Uh, it's almost like this weird. Right. Uh, I don't know if ubiquitous term is is the right way to say it but there seem I, of course i immediately want to say okay well if you want to say pitmaster now we need to break down criteria and lay out rules and here are things you need to meet in order to get pitmaster like you would colonel or lieutenant or chef for that matter so i think it's one of those words that just kind of been thrown around in the barbecue and grilling industry that everybody just kind of accepts but nobody can really point a finger on it it's not really the restaurant guy but it is and it's not really the world champion pit master on a barbecue team but it is and it's doug who's won the highest levels of competition and it's steve who's also done very well in competitions but maybe hasn't won a major it seems to be kind of this gray area term that maybe in reality we all just kind of accept and we just want to leave it as gray as possible i i can agree with that it's you know it doesn't matter it's just a label doesn't matter doug i i think you have to uh 
to know different pits in order to be called a pit master. If you are a master of one, your barbecue grill, uh, your web or whatever, you need to have multiple pits that you can be able to cook on. If you go over to someone's house, you could be able to say, okay, yeah, what do you have? Let's let's barbecue and let's get it let's get it going. All right, I agree with that too. I can I can buy into that. Uh, Steve and Doug joining me here on the show for the first embedded correspondence segment. Doug, let's start with you. You sent me some uh, things that you would like to bring up this evening, and uh, one of them was something that Steve also uh, mentioned was food contests. What do you like? What are you liking about steak cook-offs and and all this other stuff? Well, I, I've never attended the steak cook-off uh, association, and then you know you had Brad on uh, one of their cook-offs. Uh, you had Brad on, and so I kind of got interested in it and I was talking to someone today and they're going to this contest and the entry fee for the state cook-off was $150 and he's like me and that's a lot I'm going to split it with another guy and if we win we're going to you know split the money so the the barbecue cook-off entry fee was 200 bucks and the state cook-off you know which basically can be done in 30 minutes yeah. is you know 30 minutes to an hour is 150 bucks but the payout is like twice as much. You know, first place is like fifteen hundred bucks as compared to like seven hundred and fifty per per category on the barbecue side. Plus you're probably in quite a bit less on a steak cook aside from the entry fee than you would be if you're going to the barbecue competition, right? Oh, oh true. And they supply the meat. Steve they supply the meat. Steve, you like uh steak cook off too, right? Oh, I love it. I I think Brett's I think Brett's really onto something great. Are you are are you doing something along those lines? That some contests that you're running, you're doing some type of a steak cook-off. Yeah, we did a um, we did a steak ancillary contest back in uh, April, at a small contest that we did that that turned out to be a World Food Championship qualifier. And, and Greg and Doug, the steak people stole the show. They they brought. I thought there'd be ten people with maybe ten little grills, but these guys, a bunch of chefs showed up from from Chattanooga. They brought pop-ups. They brought their stainless steel uh, tables. They brought their Weber Genesis. They brought their fans. And uh, at the turn-in at the stage, they were hooping and hollering. The energy was was simply off the chain. And it was it was three times more exciting than the barbecue contest because people could actually just sit there and look over their shoulder and watch them cook. And I got to tell you, it, and Mike McLeod did the uh, MC. And of course, you know he makes it even more exciting. But it it was the mo one of the most exciting food contest i've ever seen it was incredible they were allowed to use gas grills sure they can use gas you can use gas grill and steak cook off it doesn't matter i did i thought gas grills was i thought it had to be some type of a, of a live well gas is live no, fire, I don't, but i thought I don't it had think to be charcoal so. I think you can use a gas grill doug do you know anything about that no i don't know i thought i was i you know everyone uses the pks and yeah. things like that so i thought it had to be charcoal or or wood fired from uh, aside from the excitement steve which is obvious you can tell in your voice you thought it was, as you said, the, the the winner of the whole weekend as far as the events that were taking place. Do you think that it it is quickly, though, becoming its own version of competition barbecue? Everybody has grill grates. Everybody has a PK grill. Everybody's using this kind of charcoal. Everybody wants to make their steak look like this. Does it is it immediately starting to take some of the creativity or some of the originality out of it? Well, I you know I don't know how how much creativity you can do with one you know one ribeye turning it in, but uh, the equipment you know the PK is uh, probably the the tool of choice. I, that's what I cook on here at the house. But um, you know that kind of stuff, I, you know, it all boils down to you know taste and tenderness. And uh, if you can grill the perfect steak, if you can make that thing like Brett like Brett said last week, a a pink perfect center at medium rare. Uh, then you're going to win, and that's the that's the uh, in, in barbecue that's the the secret. You know, there's there's only there's a, such a few minutes when that meat is right, and if you can master that on the steak, you're the winner, and if you can't, you're the loser. Doug, do you think that how they are judging, which is giving you a picture, and you cut it open, and that is the standard that needs to be judged? Is that a way of eliminating? Although you, I might like a medium rare, you might like rare, Steve might like well done. Doesn't matter what you like, you have to compare to that picture in front of you. Is that eliminating some of the BS that you hear from some of the other competitions? Yeah, I, I think it. I think it could. Um, but in the end, you know, people are still going to have their own 
profile taste and what they like. So I still think they're going to to grade, you know, more on the taste and, uh, you know, uh, what their personal preference is. I would actually be more excited about them if they didn't interfere with the cooking time. Friday night at 8, 8.30, that's when you're starting to, to really concentrate on your barbecue stuff, uh, at least in my mind. And so maybe they need to have it after the brisket turn in and delay awards by an hour or so. Then you can really kind of concentrate on it. That's my opinion. Doug, talk to me about rumors that you're hearing down in the Texas area for a small burgeoning contest called the Houston Livestock and Rodeo. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, top men in the industry. Uh, the, heard a rumor that basically it's, it's I think it's unusual, but I heard that Houston Rodeo is considering changing the way that they, uh, they hold the contest. Right now, if you've got one space, you can turn in one meat. Right. They're thinking of changing this <laughs> to that if you have one space, you can turn in all three meats. And so it would have to be chicken, ribs, and brisket. So that's different. You know, so to really to turn in three meats right now, you have to have three spaces. And then you don't aren't limited to turning in, you know, chicken, ribs, and brisket. You could turn in three chickens or three brisket. Right. So I think what they're trying to do is eliminate a little bit because if you're on Champions Row, you automatically get to turn in all three. So that's a built-in advantage that that people on Champions Row have. And you know maybe they're going to start leaning towards uh, you know becoming sanctioned or combining the scores. I don't. I didn't hear that. The person didn't know whether it was going to go that far. But uh, you know this will make it a little more interesting from the standpoint of you know will it be a combined score and not you know chicken versus ribs versus brisket. Steve, I've often talked to pitmasters who say one of the things that's kind of hindering the continued growth of competition barbecue is everybody hiding away in trailers, and I'm wondering if you're of the opinion that people should be getting out more and cooking more in front of the potential patrons and public. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think so, Greg. I, not, not that there's a place for you know competitions where you can cook, stay in your trailer, or whatever. But uh, I think people need to, organizers need to have a contest where you cook out in in the open. There's a there's a contest in England that does that. I think uh, uh, Big Papa Smoker does his the King of the Smoker. You have to cook out in the open. Uh, people enjoy watching people cook. I know the two contests that I've organized here in Udawa. We've everybody has to cook out in the open. They can they can see you, and uh, people interact with the people. Randall Bowman was here last last April and he won our contest and the, you should have seen the crowd around him and Randall of course Randall is you know he he talks uh, he just talks talks and talks and he was telling people about his smokers explaining to him how they work and, and they were really interested in that and uh, it just made the whole experience I think more for the attendees that much better I mean it's like they say ain't nothing sexy about watching a 300 pound man watch a smoker that's for sure <laughs> yeah no kidding uh Doug I mean you've in Texas, it seems like there's no shortage of teams at, at any competition. There's 75 and 100 and 100 plus on any given weekend, uh, perhaps in, in multiple areas, multiple sanctioning bodies. Would you like to see more people cooking out in the public? Would that help the, the continuing success of uh, competition barbecue? Yeah, I think there needs to be some reach out to the, the general public. You know, when when someone that is, doesn't know a team or they hear about this cook off, you know, and the, maybe it's in their town or whatever, they, you know, basically they can kind of walk around, but there's really no way for them. There's no interaction that, that you know, with the teams. So I, I think something needs to be done so that, it, that it's a little more public friendly, you know, but do I, you know, do I want 10 people? You know, in, in my trailer when I'm, I'm prepping my chicken, no, but, you know, uh, there needs to be something that, that basically reaches out and we can talk to people. Uh, Doug, real quick, you had mentioned in our email correspondence that there was a commercialization of the top 50 Texas monthly barbecue list uh, through a something called a Yeti passport. What the hell is yeah. going on here? Yeah, you know, I, I, I love the, the you know, the Texas Monthly Top 50 is really big. Yeah. And then when I saw this, I was like, oh, no. Yeti is is teaming up and they've got this passport and they've put together this program. And there's, you know, 10 different challenges. Challenge number one is if you go to all 50 
uh, in the you know before the next list comes out you know which is like in three or four years yeah. so you know so now it's it's really uh, it's just commercializing it to the point where wow it's really important to make that top 50 and it doesn't seem to be you know kind of independent and, and and by itself anymore well, so and, i mean what do you get if you, if you visit all 50 aside from a potential heart attack what do you get just to say you oh, did it yeah, they're giving away like a ton, uh, like one of their Tundra coolers that's, you know, valued at about $350, $50, and they're yeah. giving away, I don't know, let's say they're giving away 20 of those. And so, you know, you're going into this raffle if you if you do that. And, then, and, and they've got, you know, so on down the line. All, the, all the way down to Ramblers, you know, where they're giving out a thousand Ramblers. Steve, do you like that idea? I, I don't, I didn't really understand what he was saying. Is Are these for fans, Doug? Were the fans... Visit no. all these different contests or a cooker? No, it's it's basically the top 50, you know, barbecue restaurants in the state as designated by Texas Monthly. And then Yeti is encouraging people to go to each of these and get a sticker for their passport. And then they turn in their passport and are eligible for prizes. So now if you're on the top 50, you're just going to get even more people coming to your restaurant. Well, so basically it's a scavenger hunt. Yes, <laughs> yes. And like it, you people don't have enough to do. Yeah, the, you, you know, there's the people <laughs> There's the people that go to all of them anyway. Why do they even have to encourage them to do it? Uh, yeah, well, you know, that's 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 Yeti. I use a Weddy. Mine are those tumblers you get at Walmart. <laughs> uh, we are talking with the official embedded correspondence of the Barbecue Central show for both Texas and Tennessee. I'm not sure what happened to Oklahoma. We might have to check on him and send out some helicopters. But uh, nevertheless, this is going to be a monthly segment, fourth Tuesday of the month. Uh, boys, really appreciate the time this evening. And uh, we Thank will you, reconvene Greg. next month. All right. Good deal. Thanks, Greg. All right. Take care, guys. There they are, the uh, guys who are the official embedded correspondents for the Barbecue Central show from Texas and from Tennessee. Both good guys. I'm looking for more embedded correspondents, so if you have a barbecue take or you have an interest in following the goings-on in your particular state and across the industry and you would like to be on the show once a month with Doug and Steve, let me know. We'll hook it up. I'll put you through a series of questions and we'll go from there all right let me talk to you quickly about big papa smokers big papa smokers.com the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue curated selections of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies will get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time everything at big papa smokers.com has a pitmaster approved seal by sterling ball from award-winning rubs and sauces to american-made grill smokers Big Papa Smokers has everything you need to be a better outdoor cook. Now, whether you're a backyard barbecue fanatic or competition pro, BPS has something for you. Known for their championship rubs and seasonings, popular flavors like Sweet Money, Cattle Prod, Cash Cow are proven winners on the competition circuit. And in the backyard, Big Papa Smokers offers 13 perfectly balanced flavors that will transform ordinary meals into extraordinary. Whether you're cooking to impress judges or grilling for family and friends, Big Papa Smokers award-winning rubs and seasonings don't disappoint. You can buy them at BigPapaSmokers.com if you're looking to improve the flavor of your competition barbecue recipes. Big Papa Smokers has combined forces with fellow rub company Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form the West Coast Offense. Big Papa Smokers, also proud owner of the award-winning Granny's Barbecue Sauce. Looking for a go-to barbecue sauce that will please everyone? Granny's traditional yet powerful flavors that remind us of why we fell in love with barbecue in the first place. Find Granny's Barbecue Sauce on the other top-rated barbecue sauces at BigPapaSmokers.com. Aside from their premium selection of rubs and sauces, Big Papa Smokers also offers the very best pellet cookers, charcoal, and wood cookers available on the market today. Are you looking for a versatile cooker that's easy to use? Check out the Mac 2 Star General Pellet Grill. Big Papa Smokers is the exclusive Mac dealer and even offers special packages. Not a fan of pellet smokers? No big deal. How about the Old Hickory Ace BP? It's the only charcoal smoker that Big Papa trusts on the back of his competition trailer. And if you're a backyard barbecue enthusiast looking for a durable and versatile grill that will last forever, the M Grill from Texas is just what you need. They're built like tanks. Not sure what kind of grill you need? 
You really can't go wrong with any of the grills or smokers featured on BigPapaSmokers.com. They have something for every kind of backyard cook. Check out their website. Shop their full selection today. It's clear that BigPapaSmokers.com is the place to go for all things barbecue. Every product featured on their website has been hand-selected to help you barbecue better. Boost your barbecue skills with the help of Big Papa Smokers, the number one online barbecue store. You can call them directly at 877-828-0727 or shop online at Big Papa Smokers. That Tom, that's B I G P O P P A S M O K E R S. Big Papa Smokers. dot com. All right, we are back to wrap the first hour. Right after this, stick around. We'll be right back. advice on cooking brisket and ribs and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue it's the barbecue central show quite the time muting myself already in the first hour that's not it Thanks again to Doug Scheiding and Steve Ray for joining me this past segment. I got to make sure this phone number's right, otherwise. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, all right. We're locked and loaded there. John Dawson weighing in. Remps, I agree with your sentiments about the technological, technological bastardization of barbecue. Put down the electric leash. Get outside, build a fire, and cook something. A novel idea. Indeed. And agree. Patrick Paquette wants to be the Neb's embedded New England correspondent. Sorry, Patrick. I left you out. That was my bad. You're in for next time. Official announcement. Patrick Paquette, now the New England embedded correspondent. He'll be on next month. Big second hour coming up, in case you didn't remember. We'll get into that here in just a minute. John Dawson also weighing in on the pork tenderloin sandwich. Reps, I'm surprised that given your love of indie, I love it, that you've never had a pork tenderloin sandwich. The Hoosier vent, uh, version is deep fried, which is just naughty. On a similar note, out here in the hinterlands, Montana, known for the pork chop sandwich. Never had a pork chop sandwich either. Uh, that's not true. I think I think Kentucky also does pork chop sandwiches. I know they have mutton, but I think they do pork chop as well. And in all my times of visiting Indianapolis, I've never seen pork tenderloin sandwich on any menu. But of course, I'm only going to the highest levels of steakhouses when I am in India. So. My money is being spent elsewhere. Doug Scheiding can be found manning the pit at Rogue Cookers, and Steve Ray is found manning his pits at Owl's Nest Barbecue. Uldawa, Tennessee is uh, where he's from. All right, we're going to regroup here as we finish the first hour and head over to the second hour. Refresh libations, come back and get ready for a substantial second hour that includes the likes of Sterling Ball, Emily Detweiler, Tuffy Stone, and Sherry Gray. Wow. We'll be back right after this. Stick around.
This is Rennie Kanoff with ChampionshipBBQ.tv, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How is long? <laughs> You have a great show of a big fan. Boing. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish! What? We ate two feet before we nerfed. Oh listen, Liberty, it's a shit feast. Yeah, I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. All right, just like that, we are in to the second hour. Hey, gang, welcome in to the Barbecue Central Show. This is a show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. We do broadcast live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is widely considered to be the Barbecue Central of the North Coast. I'm uh, Greg Rappy, by the way. If you missed the first hour, never fear. It will be in podcasts in about an hour and 55 minutes from now. Still to come on this show tonight, Smithfield Classic Talk and Sherry Gray from Pellet Envy. We talk a little pork tenderloin, believe it or not. Shout out to Kevin Huber, who is preparing for barbecue competitions and watching me on the big screen. What up, Kay? Kay in the Dakotas. A north or a south. Again, I for forever I thought that those were just placeholders on a map. I didn't know anybody really lived in the Dakotas aside from John Nilgis. And lo and behold, a whole bunch of people live in the Dakotas, both north and south. You learn something new every day. If you want to get in touch with the show tonight, folks, you can do that. You can get in touch with the show by calling 216-220-0966. Email Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. On the Twitter and Instagram, at BBQ Central Show. The National Pro Barbecue Tour presented by Sam's Club rolled into Birmingham, Alabama this past weekend. And this was a local qualifier that sends the top six teams to the Bartlett, Tennessee Regional Final. And that takes place this coming weekend. So whoever won, riding a wave of momentum that others are going to have to contend with. Who won? Well, I'm glad you asked. Coming in first place, or grand champion, as we say here in the competition barbecue world, with a 701.09 Razorbacks. Oh. Reserve Grand Champion, or second place. Slayton's Barbecue Company with a 697.6. Third place, Fire Dancer Barbecue. Fourth place, Smokin' Butt Crew. Fifth place, Victory Lane Barbecue. And sixth place, and perhaps one of my new favorite names ever, uh, ever, Fat, Drunk, and Stupid. <laughs> There's no way to go through life, boy. Fat, drunk, and stupid. Uh, between one and two, almost, well, a uh, little bit better than four points, actually. And it was pretty much close after that, uh, less than three points between two and three, uh, about two points between four and five, and five-tenths of a point separating fifth and six. So 11 points going between one and six, so pretty big spread overall from top to bottom. Well, not bottom, but uh, between one and six, but tight otherwise in between. So congratulations to those teams. Moving on to the Bartlett, Tennessee Regional. Again, the next National Pro Barbecue Tour by Sam's Club taking place this coming weekend in Bartlett. Hmm. Let's see this. Papa. All right. V very exciting news, but I can't share it. Worst, right? Who likes that guy? Getting great updates, but I'm not sharing that. As I just mentioned, the next Sam's Club or the next uh, National Pro Barbecue Tour by Sam's Club coming up this weekend in Bartlett, Tennessee. Again, that's a regional final, so ten teams will advance down to the Bentonville, Arkansas 
national final. Very exciting. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Is this for real? I get an email. You need a seasoned barbecue correspondent from New York City, DJ Howie D from Barbecue Pitmasters TV and WBLS FM. Let me take a look at this guy. DJ Howie D. All right. I mean, I'm I'm open. But can you cover the state of New York? Because Patrick Paquette from the basic barbecue team is going to be covering New England. Patrick, does New England fall into, or does New York fall into the New England area, or, or is that still south enough? That's a fine line I'm sure we're treading. Of course, New York and Boston hate each other from a sports aspect, but, you know, just from a regional aspect, can we have a New York correspondent, Patrick? Is that all right? DJ Howie D is looking to potentially become a correspondent. We'll see. Howard Daly Jr., you are now officially in the ring. Rip Flounder. What does that mean? I have a few minutes, and I want to tell you that first and foremost, I maybe you've seen it on my Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff, but the guy from uh, Alfresco, uh, the Fornetto Outdoor Oven, and then the Fervor Gas Grill that is now in my backyard, that was given to me to evaluate, the grill was. But it showed up on a skid in a box. So that meant assembly required. And for me, assembly required means dangerous <laughs> left to my own devices. I mean, who knows? So after I mustered up the testicular fortitude to try and put the grill together, and I was told by the guy, you, know, you remember Rick Baker, he was on the show a couple weeks ago. And he said, hey, uh, you know, the, the oven is going to go together in like 40 minutes or less. Build the cart. Oven drops on top. You're good to go. No problem. The grill, you're going to want to a lot for like three hours, which in my case, times three, nine hours. Uh -oh. Not handy. Have I mentioned that? Well, I get to go putting it together, and there were a few issues that were quickly rectified by customer service as far as assembly is required. But let me tell you something. I am ready. I am on the precipice of gaining millions and millions, millions of dollars because I'm taking it all the way back in the, not to sound too old, twice in the same show, but do you remember back in the olden days? And for you old people, even older, when you got something that required a major amount of assembly, you had instructions, paper instructions, typically came with hardware and potentially tools, but most men have tools and they don't need the pieces of junk that come with most of the stuff these days. Now, and it's step one, take this screw and put it here. Step three, torque this, blah, blah, blah. But you had a picture reference and you also had a text reference. Well, the directions that came with the Fervor Grill were uh, 50 steps, maybe 55 steps or something along these lines, multiple steps. There were zero text directions, just kind of icky pictures that you had to look at very closely, or at least I did, because again, not handy. And as I'm putting it together, there's these kind of uh, screws and there's those kind of screws. But, and some of them are different colors, but the directions don't say use the stainless ones here and the, uh, the, the powder-coated ones here. And again, I'm left to my own devices. And all it needed to say was use powder-coated screws on these holes and use stainless steel screws on these holes. And I am going to start approaching manufacturers that make products that require installation. Number one, and then I am going to offer my service at a substantial fee that will also lessen their customer service to write them in my own. I'm the, le I'm the lowest common denominator when it comes to putting stuff together. So I will write it out 
Everybody else will understand it. Your customer service calls will go down. And it will tell you in as layman's terms as possible how these things are supposed to go together. Because pictures just aren't cutting it. And I think the more broad you get as far as manufacturing is concerned, the worse the pictures are. These weren't horrible. But I would like a little direction, and sometimes the pictures are a little vague and ambiguous. And, you know, if you, depending on what step you're in, if you put this or that in the wrong way and you keep moving because it doesn't, like, go, no, no, that's wrong, then, you know, you have a problem where you might be now disassembling, heaven forbid. So that's where my new millions of dollars are going to be coming from. It's going to be... Uh, handwritten directions right back in the old direction booklet. And I don't want to hear about YouTube directions anymore. Forget it. You can't always have a laptop or a tablet. I mean, it's like we were just talking about. Sometimes you got to get out there with paper and tools. How about a little text guidance? Is that so much to ask? That I mentioned I'm not handy. Folks, grilling season officially here, and the place to go for all your barbecue and grilling needs is Butcher Barbecue. That's ButcherBBQ.com. Certainly, we know by now that Butcher carries a great selection of barbecue products, but their portfolio of grilling items continues to expand. You've heard me talk about grilling oils for a while now, and I really believe these products will change the way you cook forever. These items are shelf-stable, do not require refrigeration like a lot of these other butters do. With the grilling oils, all you need to do is leave them by the stove or take them out to the grill, then use as needed. If you need a butter kick, use butter flavor. Want a chipotle or steakhouse kick? They have those flavors as well, and here's how I use them. The flavors aren't really aggressive, so you can build layers of flavor as you flip. Then, when I take steaks or burgers off, I then hit them lightly with another layer of that grilling oil before they go on the table, and man, I'm telling you, they are perfect. And because they're shelf-stable, once again, they never are out of sight, out of mind. A lot of this other stuff has to go back in the refrigerator. Next time, you just might forget about it because it's not there. Not so with the grilling oils. They'll be right there in front of you. Never resting on his laurels. Dave, always in the Flavor Lab, coming up with new stuff. And the newest item to tell you about right now is the Grilling Addiction Seasoning. That's available for sale right now at ButcherBBQ.com. Lastly, dealers wanted if you're currently an owner of a barbecue and grilling supply store and you don't carry the Butcher Barbecue lineup, what are you waiting for? Hit up ButcherBBQ.com, request information on how to become a dealer for them today. Not only will Dave thank you, your customers will reap the rewards by getting these fine products in their hands to try for themselves. These products extensively tested both in the backyard and on the competition trail so you know they are going to deliver the goods. Head on over to ButcherBBQ.com. That's ButcherBBQ.com. And check out all their products. You'll be happy you did. Butcher's Barbecue. Always trust your butcher. All right. We are back to talk a little Smithfield Classic. Okay? Smithfield Classic. We'll be back right after this. Stick around. Show giving you a monthly visit from a doctor of barbecue, a man actually named Meathead, the author of a barbecue Bible, bloggers, reviewers, competitors, and manufacturers by the dozens. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all of your pellet-driven cookers. Visit CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. On the other hand, if you would like to try them at Amazon.com, you can buy them there as well. You can download the free Cookin' Pellets app. Woohoo! How exciting is that? Very. Sorry, phone caller. I can't take it. Visit CookinPellets.com. Dot com for more information. That's cooking pellets. 
Bet.com. All right. Make sure I got this going. Hey, uh, I don't usually try to put together segments with more than a guest or two, but when you're presented with the opportunity, you throw caution to the wind and take the booking. Smithfield putting on an event that I mentioned last week, the Smithfield Classic presented by Big Papa Smokers, and here to talk about it are three of the biggest names in barbecue right now. Let's head to the Smithfield hotline and welcome back Emily Detweiler, Sterling Ball, and Tuffy Stone to the show. Uh, Sterling, let's start with you right off the bat. And, uh, you know, when we talk about competition barbecue, uh, ultimately we have conversations both on and off air about how it seems that the costs of competition are skyrocketing and that is allowing or uh, that is in introducing a barrier to entry. And Smithfield and uh, contests like the guinea pig are, are really trying to get around that hurdle and offer it to most of the people that are interested? Well, you know, it, there's two issues to me in barbecue. One uh, is is the cost and the return, and the other one probably is uh, a lot of talk about judging. We can't do that. What, what we do at the guinea pig, and it's been the five of them now, uh, it's a cost-controlled contest that brings the family back and pays deeper. And over the five guinea pigs, 20% uh, of the teams break even or make money and 60% cash a check. And this is all while in these, these two contests coming up, cooking Springer Mountain Chicken, Smithfield Pork and Ribs, and a Snake River Farms Wagyu Brisket. So, I mean, I really believe that the days of the, you know, I say contests are 600 or, 600 or 1,000, 600 if you're telling your wife, 1,000 if you're writing the check. <laughs> And uh, I just believe that there has to be some relief from that at some point. Now, we don't want to put on too many more because they're really hard to do. So we try and spread them out. Uh, Tuffy, you know, when you look back to when you had originally gotten into competition barbecue and you fast forward to, to 2017 and we talk about things like cost of doing competitions, when you hearken back on, on when you got into where you're at today, are you surprised at how – the evolution of competition barbecue has happened? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's grown a lot. There's, you know, there used to be a time where there were five two contests within the first four months of the calendar year. You know, there was, but there was Lakeland, there was Mobile, there was Hammond, there was like uh, Salford. There was hardly any contest during the uh, first four months of the year. And, not that, not that you didn't. I don't remember seeing many porch trailers back then. Um, much more, much smaller, much more modest. Um, and so it's it, it's it's grown tremendously. It's uh, it's been amazing to watch it grow. Do you think that, uh, as, as Sterling had mentioned, that the, the cost to maybe keep up with the Joneses, uh, the Joneses, sorry, has prohibited a bunch of would-be teams from jumping in? Oh sure. I mean, uh, I think you know. I think back when I first started cooking, uh, everything was was approached in a much more modest fashion. I mean, I was cooking when I first started cooking. I was little cooking little ten and a half pound CABs. We had the uh, first couple of years, two or three years, we had a uh, easy up and a pickup truck and some totes, and um, and so now it's it's premium rigs. It's uh, premium product from a, you know it's, it's much more focus cooks it used to be greg that uh, and back when i first started competing that there was probably more teams there that were just there for the social aspect and, and, and the fellowship and the friendships of uh of cooking and, and it wasn't nearly competitive as it is today but you know i think getting to your real point when when sterling shared with me his ideas behind uh, the guinea pig, uh, it was really, you know, like what he was saying. Um, by paying 10 deep in the four meats, by paying 10 deep overall, by bringing some components to the guinea pig that uh, included all of the family. I was able to go out last uh, last year and, and, and be a part of the, uh, the Kansas City guinea pig and 
and Sterling and his team and, and Jeff Staney and his folks just did a, a stellar job. So watching the kids on the kids' queue uh, uh, cook and, and get to walk out of there with a, a small uh, Weber kettle and 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 the, and the dessert, uh, the uh, ice cream truck that came uh, after brisket turning and uh, got to, you know, get burned by Sterling while trying to cook dinner for the teams <laughs> on Friday night. I'm just kidding. But it was just, there's so many players to it. I mean, uh, and I like, you know, I know there's some people that, that don't like having your meats provided for you, and I think it takes all of us out of our comfort zone a little bit. But but even having cooked at the King of the Smokers, I think it's kind of fun to kind of get, as a cook, to be taken out of my comfort zone and to, to not you know, have control over my meat. Now, I will say this, Greg, I also watched, uh, I watched the team scrutinize the meats uh, in preparation for the Kansas City uh, guinea pig and, and how careful they were. And they really, they weighed every piece of meat and they really had a, uh, did a good job of distributing that meat. But they're so, I, obviously I get windy and you know this about me, but it's just a, it's a fun concept. Uh, Emily, are you? Well, I think one of the... Go ahead. No, is Emily here? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, Emily! What's the score of the game? Shoes. Yeah, what's is your is your brother-in-law still pitching? Yes, he is, but I snuck away to a quieter. <laughs> place. <laughs> yeah, boy, nothing like uh, ditching a great family moment for a uh, a barbecue internet show. Oh my goodness! Uh, sorry about that. Um, talk to me about. Well, she's with her. She's with. Hold on, she's with her two favorite pitmasters. Yeah, well, that's. <laughs> We, we thank God for you guys. Otherwise, I'd really be up a creek without a paddle. Um, Emily, talk to me about the Smithfield Classic. Obviously, a guinea pig style, but why do you think it was important to put something on like this? Well, you know, two reasons. One, we we want to show the barbecue community Smithfield, Virginia. You know, Smithfield is a place, and obviously, it's a fabulous brand, and we believe in the product. But but we want the barbecue community to see our sense of place and our heritage in Smithfield, Virginia. Um, so that's, that's part of it. And the other part of it is, quite honestly, we wanted to show Smithfield the love of the barbecue community. So, you know, we have a couple of offices around the country, and Smithfield is our headquarters, which is where all of our executives sit, and a lot of our fresh pork team is out there. Um, and certainly, Taylor, Deidre, and I, and, and feet on the street. You know, we, we hear and, and feel the love of the barbecue community constantly, uh, but we want to bring that to the rest of our of our great company out in Smithfield. So kind of a twofold approach for why it's so important to us. And, you know, the reason that we're doing it in the style of the guinea pig is because we just believe in that so much. And you heard Sterling talk about the idea of having a cost-controlled event uh, that is more family-friendly, and that's really what we were going for. So those are kind of the the key drivers for this uh, first weekend of August. We're really excited about that. I know it's going to be hot and muggy in Virginia, so I apologize in advance for that, but we really do hope for a great turnout, and we're excited to show show Smithfield the barbecue love and, and show the teams the Smithfield love. Uh, obviously, hey, me. Emily, yep. let me step on Greg's toes. I'm good at that. Emily, don't you have a little announcement for the Smithfield contest? You heard it here first. So Greg, I feel like I need a little drum beat. Here, here we go. Here we go. A Barbecue <laughs> Central Show exclusive news update. That's right. Uh, Greg Rampey here at the breaking news desk here in Cleveland, Ohio, going over to Emily Detweiler with a breaking barbecue announcement. <laughs> so the winner of the Smithfield Barbecue Classic will get an automatic entry into the Smithfield King of the Smokers. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's like... That, that's a huge. That's a huge get if you win, right? Absolutely well, a huge you, get. I'll let Sterling describe it a little more. Well, first of all, you know, I think it's the only contest that you can win and get an auto invite. I mean, it, it's the only one, yeah, yeah. and it's because of Smithfield support of barbecue, Smith and Smithfield support of our events that uh, we were happy to make that spot available. Tuffy, what you can talk about what that means, right? Oh, uh, you know, I, the uh, the King of the Smokers event. I, you, you can. It's a. It's such a uh, uh, 
the event is just so special. I mean, it, you look at you look at the teams that are competing there. I'll never forget the the first one that I competed at. I mean, I, everybody around me was like, "Is this is this really a barbecue contest?" Uh, because it's so special. Um, you know, Sterling and his crew, and, and and Sterling's got the most amazing people that work with him and work so hard to to make this event uh, really special. And they and they really take care of the the cooks and they really take care of the judges and and, and you, you feel a bit pampered through the whole process but yeah it's uh Duffy, i feel broke at the end of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um well you, you really you really put on an amazing event and it's certainly uh not typical of, of what we compete in when we're out there on the circuit and it's really special and it's like and and but i think sterling has brought some components to that that not only make it unique for the judge and, and for the cook, but it, they also it's unique for uh, for the for the spectators, if you will, that come and they're not allowed to come on site until after brisket turn in, and then after that point, uh, most of the pitmasters there will do a, a demonstration or a talk of some sort, and so there's uh, and, and we've all been at those barbecue contests before where. You know, people pay at the gate and they come in, and they and they ask, "Well, what is there? You know, do I get to try the meat?" And of course, they don't get to try the meat. And and, and every event's different. Some of them have, uh, you know, great, you know, um, uh, outside entertainment. But usually, from the barbecue component of it, it's usually lacking for the for the fans. And Sterling, you know, he does a really good job with that. And you know, I was saying earlier, I I think it's fun to break up. This, this, this event by this, you know, getting this cooler full of meat and going back to your site and, and taking a look at what you have and trying to figure out how to, what you're going to do. You know, it's uh, it's not the same uh, meat that we always cook, and and so I I, I like that. And then, you know, at the King of the Smokers, no electricity, no walls, no fancy rigs. We're all under the same tent with the same amount of tables, and, and it's pretty cool. Emily, if I can... You know, I, I, but go ahead. Sorry, Greg. No, I, uh, finish your thought there, Sterling. I, I apologize. Well, the guinea pig is not a public-facing event. Okay, there is some public at Smithfield, but one of the things we did is there's no power, which is the number one cost, and we, we entertain the teams. We don't entertain the fans, mm -hmm. the spectators. So there's no ex expectation there. All of our efforts for the team, Jesse, Jody, and James is for the team, whereas King of the Smoker is the team, the judges, and the fans. But at the guinea pig, we will give you King of the Smoker treatment at the Smithfield guinea pigs around the country. Sorry, I just want to make that point. Uh, Emily, when, can I ask you two quick questions? Uh, one, we've talked at length the last few times about Committed Cooks program. Uh, are there still slots available if people are interested, or has that all been kind of sold out? So I'm really pleased to say that the program has gone exceptionally well, wow. far beyond our original expectations. We decided to put a cap on it at 500, and as of now, we have one spot left. Really? So I, yeah. Wow. So we are. Greg, Greg, have you signed up yet? Uh, guess who's taking 500? That's me. <laughs> Sign me up, no doubt. Wow, that's great. Um, the other thing I can that get you an honorary seat. I appreciate that. Um, the other thing that we talked about as well, right in the beginning, was the grant program. And I know that you, you got, Smithfield actually kind of—I um, don't want to say overextended, but uh, held up their end of the commitment. But then also committed some extra money to some uh, to some competitions this year. Uh, how is that working out? You know, it's been working out really great. I think we, we've had some great successes. I think we've had some also good learning opportunities um, for, for how we go about the grant for next year. So I am pleased to tell you that the grant program will be back next year. Wow. We're still working on some fine tunes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the grant program will be back next year. Like I said, we're working on some fine tunes for tuning, and we will also... Uh, We'll be announcing our dates later in the year this year for applications. But, oh, sorry, very exciting place. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we are um, 
you know, one of the things that's been really important to us is that the event organizers spread the payout across the entire um, 20% of the field. Yep. And what we've learned is that a lot of the um, a lot of the competitions have good intentions, but they just need a little bit of help in terms of how they do that. So, you know, as I said, when we go into thinking about the fine tuning that we can do, that's one of the things that we're going to help our, our grant events next year um, in terms of making sure that they better understand the payout structure so that it really does fulfill the intention of giving back to the team across all categories and the overall. Because that's our goal is to have more people walk away uh, feeling like they have gotten some of their money back or broken even. And uh, the, the Smithfield Classic is going to be August 1st, correct? It's August 4th. It's oh, August 4th. It's okay. Saturday of August. Got it. August 4th. Uh, and you're going to be there, Emily, of course? Yes, I will be there. I'll be there signing autographs, kissing babies, you know, shaking hands. Wonderful. All those hey, Emily, Emily, I have a question for you. I, want, yeah. I have a question oh, for you. Tuffy and I cooked the chili dogs the night before. We're doing Smithfield pork sliders. Who do you think had better technique oh, on the chili dogs? Tuffy or me? Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Who's the sloppiest cook in America? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We don't want to put you on the spot, hey, Emily, me. but go ahead and Tuffy, cut the baby you know in I half. Do? I work my plan and plan my work. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't wear white pants. Never. Uh, oh, no, um, I don't wear white pants. Hey, by the way, Greg, I steal Tuffy's lines Greg, all the time. Have you ever been at a contest with Sterling Ball? Uh, never once. You will never, if you ever go, just look at his shirt. Just, I'm just telling you now. <laughs> just look at the man's shirt. He's a slob. I, re I recycle. <laughs> green green is in these days. Green is in. Um, we are talking. Black is his friend. <laughs> and it's slimming. Hey, excuse, excuse me. Let me point something out. <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing that Tuffy's envy shows up because he he can't have a spot. We're we're the Felix and Oscar of cooks. And Tuffy, how often do we talk during the week? Uh multiple times. <laughs> and they they cover everything from uh, uh, truffles to salt. So, but we are there absolutely you know. opposites. <laughs> Tuffy, you're going to be hosting uh, this event, correct? The Smithfield Classic? I, I, you know, I'm going to be there uh, helping in every way that I can. I'm going to bring my Jambo uh, uh, the double barrel down, and we're going to cook dinner for the teams on Friday night. And uh, we're going to, um, you know, we've got a lot of... We. We, Tuffy. He said we. I said we. He did. Yeah, no. I know. <laughs> Just making sure I was that we. <laughs> Greg, I'm going to help in any way that I can. I'll do what uh, Emily and Sterling tell me to do, and I'll and I'll, I'll work hard to make that event uh, a really good one. I think sign up's been really good too. I mean, hadn't been you haven't been able to sign up very long, and so uh, the, the sign up sport's been great. So if you Harley Q, if if you want to get in, uh, probably a few precious spots left. It's August fourth. Uh, hit up the Harley Q website. You can hang out with Sterling Ball, uh, Tuffy Stone, and of course uh, uh, the main event, Emily Detweiler. Uh, and again, August fourth. So uh, gang, really appreciate you guys jumping in on with me okay. here for this segment. Let's not forget the Georgia one, the fourteenth of July. Yeah, fourteenth of July. Uh, that is a guinea pig. Uh, Randall Bowman's in Georgia uh, event, with right? Randall Bowman. That's right. Uh, so uh, there is some room in there as well. But again, spots going very quickly. So uh, please, I encourage you to sign up if you have even a remote interest. Uh, so, gang, really appreciate the time, and uh, we will catch up again very soon. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. There they Thank are. Thank you. Wow. wow. Oh, Mo, that was something else. I better do this. All guests on the Barbecue Central Show appear via the Smithfield Hotline. Yummy. Uh, in, in case you missed it, Emily pulled herself out of a of a professional baseball game that her brother-in-law was pitching in the very first time to come and do this show. Emily, come on. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was great. Yeah, leave call. Good Lord. Hey, let me talk to you quickly about the Pit Barrel Cooker. Gang, pulling the trigger on a new cooker can be nerve-wracking sometimes. 
temperature control, fire management, what woods to buy. Who needs the hassle, but I strongly suggest a pit barrel cooker. The pit barrel makes cooking simple and fun, and it just might be the most unique, versatile, and easy to use cooker available on the market today. Here's this, a single cooker that can turn out great traditional barbecue meats and also do the burgers, chicken wings, and hot dogs. That's right. Thanks to its versatility in the traditional convection, the hook and hang method, places food right in the center of the heat, so it is acting like a stationary rotisserie. Not only is the pit barrel a fabulous cooking vessel, it's aesthetically sexy as well. It's built to withstand heat. Thanks to its porcelain enamel finish, the pit barrel is able to withstand any type of weather. Extremely portable. It fits in the back of most trucks, vans, and SUVs. Basically, it's ready to go wherever you are. And of course, barbecue folks love accessories, and the pit barrel really steps up the game here. The rubs, the stainless steel rub shakers, the unique removable lash pan, the pit grips, the turkey hanger, the hinged grill grates, the specially sized charcoal chimney, the beer koozies, or soft drink koozies, the cool coffee mug that looks like a little pit barrel cooker. Best part of all, for $299, it ships right to your front door for free, ready to cook on. Not only does the cooker ship free, but everything that they sell ships free to the lower 48 because there's just so few returns. No promo code, no coupon needed. Amazing Ribs continues to sing its praises, giving it its Gold Division rank winner four years in a row now. Head on over to pitbarrelcooker.com and see what everybody's talking about. Be sure to check out their full collection of short how-to videos. Then pick up one or two for yourself. You'll be happy that you did. If you have any questions, call them. 502-228-1222. That's 502-228-1222. And yes, they will actually talk to you. Find out what great customer service is all about. Go on over to pitbarrelcooker.com. That's pitbarrelcooker.com. All right, we are back with Sherry Gray. Stick around. We'll be right back. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, welcome back. The biggest name in pork is bringing you great opportunities this barbecue season, as we just mentioned in the last segment. Get Smokin' with Smithfield and their Committed Cooks program. Learn more at Smokin', S-M-O-K-I-N, SmokinWithSmithfield.com. There is literally one spot left. You just heard it. People are racing. SmokinWithSmithfield.com. That's SmokinWithSmithfield.com. All right, helping me close the show tonight. Indeed, a closer, at least according to her husband, who has given her that title. I love finding out about unique regional food specialties. And I've been seeing this item pop up on the Facebook page time and time again over the past couple years. It's the pork tenderloin sandwich. Let's learn a little bit about the pork tenderloin sandwich. Let's head to the hotline and welcome first-timer to the show... She makes up 50% of the Pellet Envy cooking team. Sherry Gray joining me. That's all right. We're having a little connection issue. Let's see if it works. The connection. I have no connection. I got nothing for you. Thank you. Thank you. Arlie Bragg is in the instant chat right now saying that the app... Application is on his site right now. Arlie, uh, stick up the ArlieQ website as well. That way people can click on it and uh, take up the last couple spots. How many spots are in, uh, in each? Well, this is certainly a uh, unfortunate event. Of course, when uh, Rod Gray is left up to the tech. <laughs> oh, we got trouble. We got trouble. Patrick Paquette, I am just seeing this question now in the instant chat. Remember, folks, I don't really read the instant chat while we're in the middle of a conversation here because uh, many times I have been lost, lost in the old chat, and then the guest has stopped talking, and you know, what can I tell you? And now I'm looking at Facebook here to see what the deal is. Could be having some technical... Maybe there's a big storm in Kansas. No. Nope. What are we doing? I'll call. I'll try again. Look at this. 
Darren uh, Darren Worth has a huge pork tenderloin coming out of a deep fryer. Rod calling him the tenderloin whisperer. Might have to go phone here in just one second. My dad writing it on email pursuant to the last rant on directions. Connecting the smokehead to the base will take about five seconds. By the way, my dad's sending me his smokehead. Cook Shack smokehead. I'm very much looking forward to that. I'll have that in the stable at some point next week. John Dawson writing in. How'd you get that Tufster back on? As for Smithfield being a place. Yeah, it's a place. And I can't finish reading the rest of that. Come on, John. Get that big stuff out of here. That's a different conversation for a different day. 216-22. Well, actually, if you want to get in touch with the show, you can do it this way. You can get in touch with the show by calling 216-220-0966. Email Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. On the Twitter and Instagram said BBQ Central Show. All right. We are having zero success. Should we go to the phone? Let's go to the phone. Let's call home. See what happens. You know me, I hate going to the that noise, but you know, when, when we're grasping at straws, we got to grasp at straws. Hi, Greg. Hey, Sherry, how are you? Sorry. Um, Having a little. Like he's on our end. Oh yeah. Well, I it might be your tech guy that's uh, hindering you, but uh, different story. It could be. Could be. Um. So. It could be. Sherry, it works when he uses it. Uh, how um, how revealing that is, don't you think? Yes, <laughs> I'm going to take it personally, and um, he has nowhere to go. Yeah. Well, really there you the go. Same house. No doubt. Um, Sherry Gray joining me, by the way. PelletEnvy.com is the website. And we're going to talk about uh, pork tenderloin sandwich. And I was, you know, every, was is it like every Tuesday I keep seeing these pictures pop up of the sandwich. And I'm become wildly fascinated with the pork tenderloin sandwich. Now, look, I'm a huge pork tenderloin fan. In fact, my whole family is. But I don't think I've ever really seen a pork tenderloin sandwich in person other than what I'm seeing on the Facebook pages. So if we could learn a little bit more about like the background of pork tenderloin sandwich, and I assume, well, I don't want to assume incorrectly, but is it kind of like a regional dish? You know, it is from the Midwest. So it is regional to the Midwest. It actually started, as I understand it, somewhere um, around Fort Wayne, Indiana. And it is actually um, the pork tenderloin cut in, cut in cutlets. And then those cutlets are pounded flat with a meat hammer. And the traditional way is that you would, to prepare them would be that you would dredge them in um, milk, egg, and then in flour and deep fry them. Um, some people do pan fry them. There are different variations. Um, depending on what restaurant you go to, but the traditional pork tenderloin is definitely just the, the egg wash with the milk and the um, usually bread crumb, crumbs or cracker crumbs, panko, and then deep fat, fat fried. You know us in the Midwest, we like deep fat fried. Oh, it tastes the best that way. So obviously, uh, you know, quite the historian on pork tenderloin, but is it something that you just kind of ate or you saw and it kind of tripped your trigger and you ordered it and then all of a sudden it becomes this this whole thing that you guys are posting about on social media and, and now you're like seeking out the best pork tenderloin wherever? So really the way it started is Rod has always had a job where he has been able to travel around the city and eat at really hole in the walls or is what I would classify most of these restaurants. And so a couple of years ago, I was in between jobs and he had talked about kitties, um, which is probably number one in, in our opinion, number one in Kansas City. It's a little non-traditional. The other one is um, Christie's Tasty Freeze, which is a definitely a traditional um, tenderloin. So it just kind of started as me going with him on Tuesday to go have a, t a tenderloin. And then we were just gonna start going to different tenderloins and he started posting pictures on Facebook and it just <laughs> snowballed into this thing. 
And it became Tenderloin Tuesday just because on Tuesdays we started to go have tenderloins. So we would get all these recommendations of places that we should have tenderloins around Kansas City, even to a point a friend of ours who is a police officer, and you know they know good food, sure. um, recommended a location to go to Leeds Diner. So some of the places I probably wouldn't go to by myself. <laughs> Definitely not after dark. Um, but they are also two of the places that have the best tenderloins in Kansas City, in my opinion. Well, of course, it always happens that way. But have you gotten to a point where you're going to exhaust all of the pork tenderloin opportunities, or do they seem to be limitless? So if we stay in Kansas City, what we, we, what we had to start doing is qualify the pork tenderloin. Uh-huh. We had to start asking questions. Because some of them are just frozen, that they just pull out of the freezer and we actually watch them do it and throw it into um, the deep fat fryer. Yep. So those were out. And so when, we st- when people started making recommendations that you need to go here, you need to go here, did they prepare them in-house? Did they cut the tenderloin? Did they pound the tenderloin? And did they dredge the tenderloin right there in-house? Because if they didn't do that and it was frozen, we could go anywhere for that. Mm-hmm. So we start. We had to start qualifying where what would be a good tenderloin to us. I mean, we drove as far as, and it wasn't out of our way. We were already going up to um, towards Des Moines. We went to Smoky D's, and they have a tenderloin sandwich, which is which was excellent, and they do prepare it in house. So we went even beyond Kansas City if we were traveling to a contest and stopped someplace that somebody recommended for pork tenderloin. But we had to have a qualifier. The other thing is is that there are different variations. I mentioned um, Kitty's is run by a Vietnamese couple. It's in a predominantly African-American community. It is... Probably the whole building, not much bigger than 20 by 20 square. Mm. And the portion when you walk in probably holds 10 people standing, <laughs> they accept cash only. And you, you don't stay and eat there. You either walk out to your car or you take it home. But they have a tempura batter. And mm. then they, it's almost like a hot sriracha sauce. Yep. And you have to get it that way to have the whole full effect of that sandwich. So you want to eat it as quickly as possible so that tempura batter doesn't start to get soggy. Um, I like Kitty's Tasty Freeze because you you can have ice cream afterwards. Again, that is in an area where you would want to go during the day. They don't have seating inside. Uh, they do have picnic tables that you can sit at or you can eat at the car. And I think the two pictures that we took at those two locations, we were sitting in the car when Rod took pictures. So those are probably the most popular. And then we went from there. We went high-end, the Riger, which is a high-end restaurant we have here in Kansas City. They don't always have the pork tenderloin, and it's only on their happy hour menu. Mm. And they actually do pork tenderloin sliders. And they use a tempura batter. So that's high end if you wanted to, if somebody wanted to try a high end um, pork tenderloin. And if we had to say kind of middle of the road, as far as not the quality of the product, but middle of the road as far as Leeds Diner is, is definitely a greasy spoon, but they have all their food is made from scratch. They have regulars that walk in there, and as they walk in, the people are putting the food on the table for them because they come in every day. Um, And they have a very traditional pork tenderloin, and they call it the mud flap, which is huge. It's a little tiny bun with this huge pork tenderloin. So you go with friends. So uh, your description is fortuitous because I believe I am – showing a picture of you with this mud flap. It is an absolutely ridiculously large piece of uh, pork tenderloin with like a hamburger top that looks incredibly out of place. 
It's a monster. Is that it truly is just a monster? Is that some type of a, is there a one upsmanship in the world of pork tenderloin sandwiches to that regard? I think there is, but I caution people that big is not always better. Um, I'm going to compare it back to kitties because kitties, they what he does, what they do is they have um, three smaller cutlets stacked up on top of each other. So you have a really good bun meat ratio. Mm -hmm. When you get into those something like the mud flap, if you want kind of a bun meat ratio, you're going to only eat a small portion of that pork tenderloin with so that you can get the 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 bun and everything and the full flavor of what a tenderloin sandwich should be. A lot of people say, okay, give me the tenderloin with a side of gravy. And then you have a, a lot of people will do that with the extras. But wow. I would, I was truly looking at a pork tenderloin sandwich. And in that case, I ate just the portion that, with the bun. So do you guys keep a, a running list of places that you've been and ratings on the pelletenvy.com website? Or do people want to like just reach out to you guys through social media channels or what? We probably should have done something like that. We didn't do kind of a rating. We, the two of us, even between the two of us, we have our different favorites. Um, I like the, the Riger or Rieger. Um, we debate on how to pronounce it. O only because I liked the tempura batter was really light. There was a equal amount of meat and bun and, um, their sauce that they put on it, and there's three small sliders. That wasn't Rod's favorite. If we had to go with one that would be pretty acceptable to most people without having any unnecessary uh, changes mm -hmm. to get them off the path of a traditional tenderloin, we'd go to Lou's Diner or Lou's, Lou's Diner. Barn Grill. All right. And that's a bar and grill. You go in there, you get fries, and you get, and they have a great tenderloin sandwich. If, if somebody's heading in that general direction, it is okay if if they reach out and, and ask for some suggestions. Oh, oh yes, right. Rod gets the calls all the time. Oh, I cannot. What's I, your favorite? It's like if you were going to go to Chicago, you call Scotty Johnson, ask him what Italian beef place to go right, to. Right. Wonderful. So uh, yes. Um, real quick, uh, we're, we're uh, rapidly running out of time from, uh, from an, an, a terrible segue, uh, from a competition standpoint for the rest of the summer, does uh, Pellet Envy have anything on the docket? We do. We were, um, I think our next one is, I'm going to look at Rod here, Green Bay. It's a mm -hmm. double header in Green Bay. Is that the one out like on the I island somewhere? No, that is another one okay. that I really want to go to. Um, Smokey, uh, Iowa Smokey D's really raved about that one last year, and yep. so I told Rod that I wanted to go to that one, which is on, is it, I think it's Washington Island, yep. which is really cool. So I'm going to that one. <laughs> With or without Rod. Yeah, I'm going. I've already done research on the island, and I think it would be a great vacation spot. Cool. They have quaint um, bed and breakfast, so I think that will uh, that should be a fun one, and I'm looking forward to that one. All right. Uh, otherwise, and, you can uh, check them out at pelletenvy.com. We're talking with Sherry Gray and breaking down pork tenderloin sandwiches. Uh, Sherry, really appreciate the time tonight. And uh, next time, maybe we can actually talk a little bit more competition, barbecue, and things of that nature. That sounds great. I want to mention our sponsors, Yeti Coolers and the Kansas City Bar Barbecue Store. You got it. All right. There's just Sherry right. Gray. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. You got it. Great. Sherry Gray, first timer to the show, uh, dealing with a little uh, Skype technical issue, Rod. Uh -oh. We should probably test next time before you wind up getting fired from your technical expertise. But that's all right. We got to know about... What I have become wildly intrigued with, the pork tenderloin sandwich. All right. Folks, let me talk to you quickly about the CHOPS Power Injector System, the National Barbecue Association's 2015, 16, and 17 tool of the year. 
the half gallon chops power injector system designed for the competition guy or to pump up the backyard warrior easy to use clean to fill it pump it and away you go then you also have the one gallon chops power injector system double the size of the half gallon some use it in competitions like when you're cooking mbn whole hog or 10 shoulders to get that perfect one it's 120 bucks the uh, half gallon 100 bucks the newest one the chops full power injector system the electric and commercial competition big daddy not a holding tank this time but a three and a half foot pickup too from a few ounces to a 55 gallon drum it takes it all it was designed for chef rob at the best barbecue restaurant in kansas city and he has said time and time again that with the chops full power injector system his briskets are better than ever this one's 325 bucks plus you pay shipping a number of the top pit masters in the world use the chops power injector system every day to make their barbecue better than the rest here's the deal we live in a foodie world you need flavor in every bite this is how you do it and do it fast and if you don't want to inject meat, you can use it to inject alcohol into your watermelon or honeydew or cantaloupe or grapes. If you have really big grapes, you can do four at one time. Extra accessories, you want them, they got them. You want to shoot medium ground spices, they got you covered for that. They have two, three, four inch, 12 gauge needles. Also two inch close tip needles. Perfect for shooting fatty meats to keep from plugging up the needles with fat. They also sell replacement stock needle adapters and plug screws. They also have a great upgrade. You can make your chops injector bulletproof. Metal needle adapters, that's right. The Chops Power Injector System. Give your barbecue some power. Be BarbecueKansasCity.com. That's B-A-R-B-E-Q-U-E, BarbecueKansasCity.com. And we'll be back to wrap up the show right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you've found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. This portion of the show being brought to you by the National Pro Barbecue Tour, presented by Sam's Club. 31 cities, 500,000 in cash, eternal bragging rights if you win the whole thing. The 2017 Pro Barbecue Tour rolls into Bartlett, Tennessee for a regional final this coming weekend. I mentioned that a little bit earlier in the hour. To get more information on the tour, register your team to compete or check results. You can visit kcbs.us slash Sam's Tour. That's kcbs.us slash Sam's Tour. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, this is DJ Howie D from New York City. What's up, DJ Howie D? What can I do for you? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to get a quick uh, thought about the new KCBS bo composite boxes coming out. I was cooking in Washington, D.C. at the barbecue battle. Yeah. And every time uh, any uh, oil or grease hit those boxes, you can't get it off. I'm not familiar with the composite box. It's a... Um, it's like a green thing? It's a green thing, basically. Mm. They take a, uh, it's like the McDonald's boxes, the uh, cardboard boxes. Yep, yep. And I wanted to get some uh, ideas on how to keep those boxes clean <laughs> and grease free. All right. Well, I don't, here's what we're going to do. We'll put it out there and uh, we'll, we'll make a post on the Facebook. And I think, unfortunately, with cardboard, once it stains, that's, it's got to be it, right? I mean, styrofoam is easy to wash off. Otherwise, you got to be you got to be a uh, a surgeon from start to finish with that kind of box. I think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah yes. Well, yes, we'll it's, see. It's, it was crazy thing, but um, as far as the competition in uh, at the battle in Washington D.C., uh, we did pretty good. I came in uh, 11th in chicken and 13th in pork. How'd you do overall? My Overall, I hit 15. Oh, nice. But, That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but I, I did better in Memphis in May. I came in uh, came in first for uh, barbecue tomato sauce. Mm, delicious. Love tomato sauce. All right. Well, uh, let's see what we can do about this composite box scenario that you threw out. And uh, hopefully we can get some answers for you. And I appreciate you calling in. And I was the one who sent you the email. Yeah, I so, got you. Uh, Yep, I'm going to hit you up okay. uh, after the show, and uh, we'll get you hooked up here for the New York Correspondent. Okay. All right, appreciate it. All right, bye. There he is, DJ Howie D. 
My man was calling in like gangbusters here over the last 45 minutes, but, you know. Tried to get you in, got you in. All right, so uh, I'll be reaching out to you. Let me recap really quick. I'm going to be late, Kevin, sorry. Letting you know right up front. Uh, all the way back in the first hour was Max Good from AmazingRibs.com. Second, we had the embedded Barbecue Central Show correspondent piece with Steve Ray and Doug Scheiding. In the second hour, we talked the Smithfield Classic with Tuffy Stone, Sterling Ball, Emily Detweiler, who was live at her brother-in-law's AAA game where he was starting pitching for the first time ever. Not starting pitching, but was pitching for the first time. So thanks to Emily for breaking away to talk about Smithfield. And then we wrapped it up with none other than Sherry Gray from Pellet Envy talking about pork tenderloin sandwiches. Then DJ Howie D came on at the very end. How about that? Uh, all right. Big show planned for next Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. And yes, there will be a show next Tuesday, even though it's July 4th. I don't care. I'm going to do a show. You going to do a show? I'm going to do a show. So until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.